Hey, welcome back to the next episode of Resurrection Motorsports. And in this episode, we're going to be going over some F-150 maintenance on my daily driver. Uh, I have a 2015 F-150 2.7 EcoBoost. We're going to be changing the spark plugs. And we're going to replace the passenger side mirror because I had a little accident, backed into a fence post, and now the glass is broken. So we'll get into that. This is going to be the first of a few episodes where we do a little bit of maintenance on the F-150. I got, like I said, spark plugs, replace this mirror. Next up will be rear brakes. We're going to upgrade those. So while I was setting up for this episode, I could not for the life of me think, what does God want me to talk about in this episode? So I was praying really hard and it hit me. Out of nowhere, all I could think was Mark chapter 10. So I grabbed my stand, my, my Bible, opened it up to Mark chapter 10, read the entire chapter. Had no clue what it meant. Couldn't decipher it. I read it a second time, still didn't understand it. The Holy Spirit guided me as it normally does. This being the ESV, it has the study guide at the bottom that shows me, it breaks it down for me in layman terms, makes it a little bit easier for me to understand. Highly recommend it for anyone who has a hard time reading through the Bible or as a new Christian such as myself, where I have a hard time understanding exactly what's trying to be said. This breaks it down, makes it super simple, along with having accepted Christ and having the Holy Spirit in me, it makes it easier for me to understand because I feel like God explained it to me while I'm reading it. So I'm going to read from Mark chapter 10, verses 35 to 45, because that's where I was guided from. And what happens is James and John, they say to Jesus, Teacher, we want we want you to do for us whatever we ask you. And he said to them, What do you want? me to do for you. And they said to him, grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left hand in your glory. And Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they responded to him, we are able. And Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left hand is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to indignant at James and John. And Jesus called to them and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of Gentiles lord it over them. And their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as ransom for many. Again, that's the third time that I've read this message in the last probably half hour, it's just now dawning on me what Jesus is saying. When the disciples ask about being at his right and left hand, and Jesus explains, will you drink what I drink? Will you be baptized what I baptized? Jesus is saying that it's different for him. He's going to drink the wrath of the Lord and be baptized by the wrath of the Lord as the atonement for sin. Jesus is telling the disciples that I am about to be crucified to forgive the world of all sin. The disciples are gonna simply be, the, the pain and suffering that they'll experience will only be in this world for a short time. It'll only be for them to serve other people or to deal with daily life. Jesus is literally telling them, I am going to take on the wrath of God for all mankind. And in doing so, he also portrays the fact that even though he is God, in the human life form, there's still a hierarchy of Jesus the Son, God the Father, and that he will pay the ultimate price to the Father 
for mankind. And when I understood that, it it's just it's amazing to me that that Jesus knows he's going to go through the worst torture anybody has ever seen in their entire life. That nobody can even fathom today what Jesus actually went through. Also that if we accept him, we can be forgiven of any wrongdoings that we've ever done. Any sin that we've ever committed is wiped clean because of the act that Jesus did. And we can take hope in that by receiving him into our hearts. We are given a pass to heaven because he has paid the debt to God for our sins. And we are now able to to live in heaven with him after life. And that to me is just the most amazing thing that anyone could ever, that the hope that that provides is just beyond amazing. And I hope that maybe after hearing this, it provides hope to you knowing that no matter what, Jesus died for us and we're forgiven. He wiped the slate clean. We are, we, there's nothing, we don't owe anything to anybody. We are forgiven. And in that comes hope that one day all the pain and suffering that we experience every day here will be gone as we ascend to heaven to be with Jesus. So I'm going to pray and then we'll jump into the maintenance that I spoke about earlier. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time and the ability to share your word with as many people as see this video and let my words be, let me just say what you want to say and the message that you want to give come out of my mouth to the people who see this video. And in doing so, they are brought to you and glory is brought to you, God, and that you, that you are glorified in everything that I do, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey everybody, now that we're in the shop, got the truck in the garage here, we're going to get to pulling the spark plugs out. Got to do a simple spark plug change here. Not too bad on this. I've already pulled the engine cover off. A couple bolts takes that off. We're going to jump right into it here. Got, uh, we're going to need our 10 millimeter. Uh, got a couple ratchets out here, got an extension and a, a nice spark plug socket to pull those out with. Let's get to taking this thing apart. Starting on the passenger side of the 2.7 liter here. This, uh, this is a, what I consider the harder side. None of it's really hard, but this one's a little bit more complicated. There's a few hoses and wires here in the way that needs to get out of the way and moved and whatnot. So. I personally believe take as little off as possible because that's less you have to put back together. If you can figure out a way around it, then do so and that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to jump right into it here. I'm going to get in here and uh, pull these plastic clips off. You'll see these just slide right off these studs to get this wiring harness out of the way. A lot of people may argue with me that the way I do this is not really the best way but to me it's the fastest way the easiest way the hardest part of these change is getting these little purple tabs off of these connectors and make them so little let me grab a screwdriver here that'll be the easiest way to do that Actually, I just grabbed a bit of a screwdriver, a multi-purpose screwdriver here. And this one does not want to let go tonight. There we go. Got that out of there. A little persuasion here. Pull these connectors right off. Maybe. Put that right there for now. Pop that off 
once you get that connector fully unlocked there, they just slide right off. It's not hard to remember how they go because the wires are so crimped in place that you have no trouble figuring out where those go back to. Now you're going to need a, to get your coil pack out here, you're going to need a deep well 10 millimeter. And trust the old, oh, I apologize, that's not a 10. It downsized that one on me. I believe that to be an 8 millimeter. Try this again with the right size socket. That is indeed an eight millimeter. If you decide to use this tutorial for yourself, uh, I'm not responsible for anything you break or damage. I don't claim to be a professional. I'm not a professional mechanic. Just been doing this long enough that. Learned a few tricks here and there to save myself some time and money. Again, a lot of people disagree with the way I do this, but I just pull this coil pack out of the way, set it to the side, move on to the next one. I think the fastest I've done a spark plug change on this truck is about 20, 25 minutes maybe. They're not hard at all. People get intimidated nowadays because these new motors, you know, oh, all the computers, stuff like that. Deep down inside, it's all the same stuff. Coil plug number two coming out of the way. This third one is a little tricky. It's hard to see because of this hose right here. Got some tags and wiring harness in the way. It's just like the rest of them, however, it is a stud holding the coil pack in. It's got a wiring harness connector sitting on top of it. Pull that off, you got access to it. As you can see, I wear gloves around all these clips and clamps and doodads they like to add to this stuff nowadays. One pair does not last very long. Especially if you're like me, you're not very careful. You just kind of get in here and get to doing what you want to get done. You get in a hurry, catch one clip, and the glove is ripped. So, get that stud out, and we are now about. Halfway to completion. This one again is a little tricky with all the harnesses and hoses and whatnots in the way. But if you're careful, it will slide right out of the way just like the other two. Now you have access to all three spark plugs. Let's uh, switch over here. To this ratchet with a spark plug socket on it. There we go. Now this truck is tuned. Brew City Boost, what's up? BCB tune on it. So these spark plugs are gapped a little bit. I like to make sure they're nice and loose, obviously, before I try to pull them out. Another way I do this is I do all three first. Now my spark plug socket does have a rubber piece on the inside that allows you some spark plugs to 
the, the rubber will pull the spark plug out. However, this extension does not allow that. So I have another trick to get them out. I'll share with you as soon as I get this third one loose. Again, this third spark plug hole can be a little tricky with the harness and hose in the way. Hopefully you were able to see that I just took the extension off the ratchet, maneuvered it in there, and we should be good to go. Take them apart again, pull it out. Here we'll get out our nifty expandable magnet. Stick it down in there and ba-boom. These spark plugs are definitely due. They're not terrible. I've ran them a little bit longer than they should have been ran for a tune truck, but that's my decision. I'm sure I'll get some comments about how I should not be running them that long. Again, tune truck, I ran them probably 25, 30,000 miles. This one does not want to come out yet. So, get back in here with the extension. Give it a few more lefty loosies here. should definitely have done it if you're using your cowling to collect your tools and spark plugs and whatnot do not bust your windshield hmm. not too bad at all considering the usage pretty happy about that Back to this third spark plug hole. Tricky again. Even with the magnet because it's so tight in here. Lost my pocket clip on the magnet there. This I must have not made it loose enough on this one as well. This definitely is not going to be a uh, 25 minute spark plug change like this. This is uh, But again, like I said, this is the more difficult, quote unquote, side. So, I shouldn't say difficult, more time consuming side because of the angles and see, loosey goosey, they come right out. All right, so I got my pre-gapped spark plugs, gapped before we started. I like to just stick these in here as far as I can with my finger. Normally that slots it right in the where it needs to go. All right, so now that we're done getting the plugs in there, the rest of this side is just reverse of installation or of removal. On this side, everything on this side is exactly the same as the other side. Like I said, just a little bit more convenient, easier to get to.
All right, as you can see here, got my mirror, got it tilted all the way to the left. I was paying attention to the backup camera, not paying attention to my mirrors backing through my gate up to a trailer and backed right into the fence post. So I busted the glass. I bought replacement glass, got a brand new piece, about 50 bucks from the Ford dealership. And all it is is pop it off, remove the wires and pop it back on. Let's see if we can get this done fairly easily. I'm not too concerned with breaking it, obviously, because it's already broken. I don't know that this, well, there you go, just like that. Pops right off. Just gotta pry it right off of there. That was fairly easy. Let me get the new one out of the box here. Looks exactly the same. So, take these wires. Hopefully you guys can see this. I can't see the camera. Um, I am wearing safety gear. Uh, I typically don't. <laughs> Even though I should for stuff, I don't. I did not want pieces of glass in my face. Um, which I was told was a very good possibility. And I did not want glass in my eye, so... And that's that. Alright guys, that's the bonus for this episode. Brand new piece of glass. If you see, I have the mirror turned out just a little bit because in an attempt to make it easier. Turn it in, you're good to go. Alright, to the next episode guys. God loves you. I love you. God bless. Alright guys, now we got that all finished up. We're cleaned up, ready to go. Got the spark plugs in, running great. Truck's running good. Got the mirror replaced as you saw. We can see on the passenger side now. Not that we couldn't see before, but a little bit easier now. We are good to go. We hope to check you up, catch you on the next episode. Also, like, subscribe, share, do all that jazz. You know, hit the bell, all the stuff that every YouTuber asks you to do. And on that note, catch you on the next one.